Hello, I am Ice Beast, and welcome to Endless Legend. This is a really cool game. I've only played a couple hours, but I really enjoyed the couple hours, and I thought, you know what, maybe I should make a series out of it. So uh, we'll definitely consider doing this as a series. You guys will have to tell me if you want to see more of this. That's going to be uh, very critical to determining if this becomes a series or not. But this is a uh, 4X strategy game, kind of like Civ Five, but I would say superficially like Civ Five. Uh, the superficialness is... Uh, it's sort of easy to spot, but I'll go over the, 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 the superficial things. Anyways, we're going to start a new game. Um, I like sort of a standard uh, 4X. We have, um, you know, four factions we can play, or we have uh, factions we can play. That we're going to have uh, five enemies. We're going to be playing on um, sort of normal difficulty, normal game speed. Uh, I'm not going to adjust any of these other things. I'm basically just going to choose my race. So there are... Um, eight default races and you can make your own which is pretty cool i'm not going to do that right now because um i'm kind of scared of it uh but yeah there's eight default races for any new putty who just picks up this game and, and starts out right away i would say that the vaulters are probably the the most normal race um the wild walkers are also pretty normal um the, uh, I would say do not play as the Broken Lords because they, 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 the way they operate is completely different. They use basically uh, the equivalent of gold for everything. They don't use food and production and stuff like that. Um, and then there's sort of some pretty, pretty standard -y other uh, races. Um, what did the dragon get that's cool? Um, the Empire Mint, which gives them money. They have Wyverns. Ancients. Okay. To force Truce, Peace, or Alliance on a targeted Empire. That's interesting. Um, this is a, they go for a Diplomatic Victory, Advanced Diocry. Uh, well Connected, being on an ancient race with ties to other all people. To all their peoples, this empire knows the location of it. Okay, interesting. Uh, they have access to the main quest, and they have the access to this thing. Um, available and unlocked. Interesting. All right, so let's let's actually. I, I kind of want to do. Um, I don't want to do these guys just because they freak me out. Uh, so I think we're gonna do the the dragon here. So every race has different abilities, um, different units they have access to. Unlike Civ Five, where there's you know like uh, or Beyond Earth and any of that stuff, where there's like principal uh, building uh, unit lines. There's only actually a handful of units for each race, and then you can upgrade the units with different stuff that you research. So that's all really cool. Um, sorry that I, I sort of bungled up that very beginning where I was trying to figure out what I wanted, which race I wanted to be, but I think we'll be the Draken here. I will let the intro cinematic to play. And uh, then I will, uh, there'll be a little, what I'm trying to say, there'll be a, uh, an annotation probably up here to skip the cinematic for those of you who don't want to see the cinematic. Um, come on game, let's, let's go. Let us go. All right, here comes the cinematic. Okay, maybe not. Maybe it just wants to load really slow on the first time. They're creating instancing mesh. Uh, come on. I really want to watch that cinematic. This should be it, because we're awaiting other players, other players being me. We have always been here. The whispering galleries have always held the memories of our people. Then they came, and they lifted us up. But they fought, and they fell. Our world was swept by cataclysm, and we were left alone. Still, we persevere, protect, and maintain as we always have. We may lack their sight and their knowledge, but we can still read the omens. Another cataclysm is coming, and it is we, the Draken save the world of Oregon. Alright, so here we go. The, yeah, the world is loading. It's, it's uh, probably not liking frapping 
uh, and loading at the same time, which is unfortunate because this is actually a pretty cool effect when uh, when uh, that goes on. All right, where are we? We get to we know where everybody starts. This must be us, right here. Yep, th these are our guys. Oh, I forgot I had my mouse in the bottom right corner. That's why I was drifting out that way. Anyway, um, this is us, and this is our our army. We also have a settler in this army. Let's turn on the uh, the the resources so I can see where it might be good to found a city. Um, possibly right where we are, actually. A lot of good food tiles, some production around here. It'd be good. Um, this production would also be pretty sweet, but I think we're actually going to found it right where we are. So let's uh, colonize right. See, this would be really good to colonize, but we can't actually colonize there. Um, the only other p place to consider to colonize is right here, and I think actually I'm going to do that. So, let's colonize. Alright, so now, uh, what is special about this compared to, um... We're gonna get the Founders Memorial. Uh, compared to... So what, what's uh, good about this compared to, let's say, Civ Five, or, or what's different? Not good. Um, first thing is you see these little regions, like this one, Madinav. Uh, you can only have one city per region. So, if I want to colonize somewhere else, I'm gonna have to go up to one of these other regions. All right, what else do we got going on here? We got armies. Uh, we, I believe, can parlay to begin with. Uh, or we're going to search these ruins. Reward the 37, which is a crossbow. Very interesting. So we've got a crossbow. I'll show you guys combat in the relatively near future, uh, which works very cool. I really like the combat in this game. Hopefully we'll be able to... Yeah, we've encountered a bunch of uh, factions. We've encountered a bunch of AI factions because we know where they all are. Um, a good question is, what are they? We have, um, these look like uh, the Broken Lords, yeah. Then we got uh, the Wind walk Wild Walkers, the Elfish guys. These are the Ardent Mages. You are going to be the Vaulters, yep. And you are the uh, Roving Clans, who I haven't actually seen before. Roving Clans are supposedly pretty cool. Uh, anyway, let's uh, end our turn. So yeah, this game, it just, it works very differently. The combat is actually one of the big differences about how this game works. Oh, I don't have any science chosen. Uh, the tech is another big change. So unlike a linear tech uh, tree like, uh, you know, Civ Five or any of those things, this is a sort of progressive tech tree where I uh, research techs, any tech I want, and the... Every tech increase I reach here, so this one's going to cost me 28. The next one I research is going to cost me more. The next one I research is going to cost me even more. And then once I've done, I believe it's 7 techs, or 9 techs, sorry, I then get to move on to this next tech tier, and then this next one, and this next one, and this next one. And then you might be saying, what do the colors mean? So the blue ones, I believe, uh, are the ones I've already researched. That is correct. Uh, the... Gold ones are units. So this will unlock me the protectors of Ariga... Um, well, no, these, are, they, these aren't units. These are um, empire-specific ones. Sorry. Uh, so this is a unit, the Wyvern, um, which is a flying unit. Uh, and then we have the Protectors of Riga, which is a, allows me to get plus one uh, minor faction assimilation slot. I'll explain what that is later on. And then these other ones should be uh, uh, non-specific things. And then you can see the little icons, like this is a building. Uh, public libraries are pretty good if you want to go for science. Uh, search party is pretty good to help ruin. Sewer system is good because it gives me approval. Uh, that gives me money. Uh, that helps my guys out. This is really good if I need to get some extractors going, which I probably will. Uh, this will give me different types of extractors. This mercenary marketplace is good as well. Uh, let us first, though... Uh, back out before we pick a tech. Oops, hit the wrong button. And look to see if we have any resources, obviously. We have a dye deposit and a titanium deposit on in our area. So, with that, n knowing that, we probably want to build a titanium extractor, f a research titanium extraction. So that's going to cost me 28, and then uh, the next ones will cost me more. So let's get out of this screen. Um... 
So we got a quest. There are quests in the game. So this quest says level up a, uh, two Drakenling units, so they're level two, and I'll get 80 dust, which is basically gold. Um, so we'll we'll try that out. One sec, I have to sneeze. All right, sorry about that. Didn't uh, you guys didn't hear me sneeze? Cause I edited it out, but I had to sneeze, which sucks. Um, anyway, we're gonna get uh, this. We're gonna come over here to this uh, neutral village, which is hostile to it. Neutral me or a minor faction is what they call them, and we're gonna talk to them. Come on, and we're gonna see if we can get them to uh, be happy with us. And they will, they will be happy with us if we locate the eyeless ones village, which has marked on it, and destroy it. All right. So we we need to find these guys' village, which I believe I should be able to see now. Yep, it's right here. So then I will take my dude. And I will begin heading this way. And if I accomplish this quest, these guys will be happy with us. And cool things will happen. Now I want to come back here and see what we're doing. Um, we're going to level up in one turn. What if I do this? It'll be two turns. So it's level up meaning the city is going to increase in size. So it makes a lot of sense not to do that. Um, so let's end our turn. So now we got two dudes. Um... So that take four turns or six turns, and this will go from seven turns to five turns. So I'll be trading two turns of city growth for. Uh, I think I'll leave it so that the city grows faster. I like controlling my armies personally, so we're gonna continue that. Little little lake right here. Search the ruins because you can always get good stuff. We we happen to not, but we could have. This is the... S where's the city I need to destroy? Was this it? Wait, where were those those things I need to destroy? What's this, right? So, yeah, it must be here that I need to go to. Alright, um... My, uh... My hero has leveled up. That allows me to gain access to the hero's skill tree. Um, so I can get defensive tactician... Uh, if I give it one, all my units in my army get uh, plus five defense. At level two, they get another plus five defense. And at level three, they get plus 15% defense. Um, battle him. What does battle him do? Plus, ooh, that's interesting. That's good. I like battle him. Interesting. And so these other ones, this gives me uh, improved search on ruins. Uh, irrigate. This helps me if I become a, a, a governor. But we'll take the, the, the basic one here. Okay, cool. Um, minimize. Actually, we'll just get rid of these things. All right, cool. Let's continue. So we'll come over here, and we, we may get to see some battle. Search, dismiss. Where are, are the things I need to go kill? I thought that was what I needed to kill. I thought it would mark it on my map. Free our people in Simoia. Let's um, pin this quest. Where yet? Simoia. This is Simoa. Where's the village? I thought it said it marked the village on my map. Well, I'm going to have to just go do it the old fashioned way. Find the village. This is the edge of the. Uh, I've discovered the eyeless ones. This is the edge of the thing, so this is probably the village I need to go destroy. Um curious to see how these guys I have uh, do in combat. Oh, we're done researching. All right, beautiful. Let us um, research. Uh, do I want the mill foundry? Yeah, I think the mill foundry is pretty good. So yeah, we'll get the mill foundry next. I would like to get uh, both of these relatively soon and also start getting um, out of settlers as well. So we're going to attack because that's what they wanted me to do. Um, all right, so we're going to do this manually, and you guys get to see combat. So this is how combat works. Uh, we also encountered a new minor faction. That's fine. So yeah, this is how combat works. And so what I'm going to do is is lay out my forces. Um, we're in the deployment stage, so I'm going to lay out my forces. These are um, infantry, infantry support. Okay. This is a ranged unit of range 3. And these both are infantry. Got it. So we've deployed our units. Now we're in the targeting screen. These are both ranged. That's good to know. 
Alright, so yeah, you guys both go hit. So you go like that, you go like that, you go like that, and you just hit. Alright, so we're gonna. And this is the order in which people take their actions. Oh, I throw cool fireballs. I do, I do some cool attacks. Um, are you gonna get there in time, or do you not have enough moves? You do have enough moves, okay, good. So this tells you the odds of things happening, so there's a 0% chance they do a really good attack, a 0% chance they do a medium good attack. Uh, yeah, everyone just keep targeting the same guy. So yeah, see, is there a 10% chance I do a great attack, 52% chance I do a medium attack, 29% chance I do a kind of a weak attack, and a 10% chance I miss. That's basically what it's saying. Uh, so those are the, uh, the, the attack odds, basically. Um, it's what it's actually, to be a little bit clearer, this is a critical attack, a normal attack, a partially defended attack, and a completely defended attack. And we should get some good XP out of this battle. So that's good, because that will help us raise a uh, level up our army. Um, there's no reason to do anything else right now. I have fought much more complicated battles than this, so this is sort of a basic battle. Alright, so yeah, we won the battle. As you can see, the battle takes place on the actual terrain map, which is kind of cool as well. We got 8.2 XP per unit. Um, these people are really happy. Return to the tribe to restore their trust. So we got 10 Titan Bones, and we can get 10 uh, Grass Lick, and we pacify those guys, so we'll do that. Now, we've also effectively pacified this village. The only thing that the problem is is that we can't, we won't be able to use them to our benefit, and I'll explain how we use people to our benefit once we pacify this one, until we rebuild that village and also build a city in this area. So, yeah, th those are things to uh, to consider here. we got to get back to this village. Beautiful. So we have uh, pacified these people. Uh, unfortunately, there's only one in this territory. And now what these people actually are doing is contributing to our, um, to our, our, res our, our population pool. So doing one extra guy here doesn't help. It does significantly help on the uh, on the production, though, or on the uh, leveling up of the city. So we're gonna, oops, hit the wrong button. So we're gonna just uh, let that happen on its own, and then you, my friend, need to go find more temples to go check out. And then the question is: Is what am I going to? Um, where am I going to build more? cities because that's the next thing I really want to do I think I'm gonna get the titanium extractor which I'm gonna build here so some of the things you build directly on the map and then once that's done I'm going to build a settler um, and I'm gonna want to all right so for some reason the recording stopped with about a minute left to go on it I don't know why it did um, it's kind of weird uh, but we'll just end the episode here. The, you probably missed uh, me just searching some ruins. I hope you didn't miss that fight. You didn't miss that fight, for sure. Um, you might have missed me assimilating the, these guys or discussing assimilation, uh, which means that they that their workers now contribute to my city. So even though this is only a level 3 city, I have 4 workers because I have these 1 guy contributing. Um, I also arranged this such that our titanium extractor and our city will grow at the same time so that when we start building our settler... Um, we won't run out of people, or we, we won't be uh, halting our progress because we won't be making any progress anyway. And then the last thing I did was build, start constructing this titanium extractor over here. Um, I think that was probably all you guys missed, and then, you know, I moved my army around. Um, hopefully you didn't miss too much more, but this is where we're going to end the episode, so I hope you guys... Uh, you probably actually caught us a lot of that, uh, but whatever. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this, and if you did and you want to see more, please, you know, leave a comment saying, yeah, I'd like this series, please, or start a series, please do more, because I really enjoy this game, and I, uh, if, if not, I'm going to just be playing it, with, when you know, in my off time. Uh, that all being said, uh, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you all...
next time.